This begins CD number 2. Please visit www.mushubs.com for more audio and video download. Now this person who's possible, the understanding of the Sahabas was as long as you've paid your zakah, you can hold as much wealth as you want. As long as you pay your zakah, there's nothing wrong with that. That was the understanding of the general Sahabas. But Abu Dhar al-Ghifari had a different understanding. He said, have you got any hold of wealth? And he would start to whip people. In Medina, because he had his understanding, he would go around whipping people. Umar radiallahu heard of this when he was a Khalifa. And he said, what's going on? Now he, Umar then didn't come and say, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, you're on the wrong path, going Dalala, you have misguidance, get back to your house, you've missed the snow. He knew that this Sahabi is doing ishtihad, he's thinking, he's got a plain understanding. In the, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu did this, Umar radiallahu saw this, he called him. But he said, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, he said, how about if I give you a house, Hassan Medina, would you like that? Look how diplomatic he is. He's not saying to him, get out of Medina. He's saying, how about if I make you a house outside Medina? He said, fine. So he made him a house. Abu Dhar al was outside Medina, living outside. They didn't have a problem. But he did not stop him with his ishtihad. He did not stop him with his way of thinking. Again, in the Quran and Sunnah, a lot of Sahabas, many Sahabas, they had this approach. Like that hadith of Bunab Banu Khurayza. Half the Sahabas said no. Prophet said don't pray asr. So we will not pray asr until we reach Banu Khurayza. Others said let's think deeply. What did he mean? Same with many ahadith. Now in this time there are same things. Those who want to follow madhabs or who are the ways of the imams or the four imams their way is of the way of Umar radiallahu anhu, the people who look into matters. The way of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu is like the people who don't follow madhabs. They say no, Quran says this, Hadith says this, there's only one way brother. There's no two ways. Okay? I've, I've explained to you throughout this lecture that this, this type of thinking was not the general understanding of the Sahabas. Okay, it was Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. Now, the people who are following Madhab should not go bashing these people or then going against them saying that, brother, you are wrong, you should look into hadith, you should follow this interpretation. That. No, leave them. If he is following one thing, as long as someone has got a hadith, as long as someone has got evidence, leave them. That's what Umar radiallahu did. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari is looking plain at the Quran. He's not going to look deep in the Quran. He's an old Sahabi. He's got his way of thinking. He's not going to listen to Umar. Umar radiallahu can see this. He's not going to bend Abu Bakr radiallahu uh, 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 Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu arm and say, no, you must believe in this. All the Sahabas saying you're wrong. No. He said, I'll give you a house outside Medina. He did not condemn him of what he was saying. This is what we need to do. When you see a brother, I've got different understanding. Alhamdulillah, salama, peace. Don't separate. Don't say he's wrong. Don't say that I can't pray behind him. Don't say that he's... No, ijtihad, there's a lot of expansion. There's a lot of room in Islam. It's not one way, there are several ways. And if, if a person believes there's one way, then leave him. Salama, peace. Spread peace, the Prophet said. Don't separate. Now let me show you in the Quran and the Sunnah, where you can dispute that. Some people are saying uh, these days that there's only one way you can't even dispute. Uh, it's haram to say in another way. For instance, a few years back, I led the Eid prayer. There's two ways to pray the Eid prayer. There's one to pray Eid prayer according to Ruwaya of Ibn Abbas with 12 takbirs, which you will find in the Middle East. There's an, uh, that's the one, ad one adopted by Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. There's, a one, there's another way of praying with six takbirs. That's the one Ibn Masood narrated. And that's the one you will find many of the subcontinent Indi uh, of India, the people that they follow. Now when you've got the two people coming together, what happens? Several years ago I led the prayer. There's one brother after I stood up in the second rakah, this brother behind me who said, Allah, 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 because I did not do extra takbir. So after the salah, when I finished the khutbah, uh, we, he met me and said, Akhi, uh, the way you prayed, it was wrong. Stay away, he was wrong, it's not right. So I said, brother, if, tell me why you're saying wrong. Because there's a hadith. I said, well, there's another hadith. So then he said, uh, are you one who follows the madhab? I'm cutting you brief. He said, are you one who follows the madhab? I said, well, yes, I do. I follow the madhab of Abu Hanifa. Rahimahullah. He said, astaghfirullah, akhi, haram, akhi. Akhi, haram, this is not right. Okay? So, I... I looked at the brother and I said to him, well, when you were young, 
when did you follow the Quran and Sunnah direct and not through any I said, who, who taught you religion? He said, my father. I said, who was your father? He said, he was a Shafi'i. I said, okay. I said, when did you convert from Shafi'i to only Quran and Sunnah? He said, four years ago. Said, How old are you? He said, 38. I said, okay. And just a minute ago before that, he said, Akhi, your prayer is not valid. You're following Imam Abu Hanifa, your prayer is not valid. I said to him, well, if that's the case, that you for 34 years of your life was following the, the, uh, the education given to you by your father, and he was a Shafi'i, and you followed the Shafi'i way, following an Imam. And if your father's salah was not done, your salah was not done, then do qaza for 34 years. Don't repeat your prayers for 34 years. No, I'm not going to do that. I said, okay, you're not going to do that? Were, you, were the salah of your 34 years valid or invalid? And he was stuck. He didn't know what to say. I said, if it's valid, then my prayer is valid. Every other Hanafi's prayer is valid. Every other Shafi's prayer is valid. If it's not valid, then I want you to repeat 34 years of prayer. This is the shrewdness, this is the rigidness of people's minds that, that separate one another. Anyway, Alhamdulillah, we've, we've uh, talked about, I think it's the time of Maghrib, but I hope uh, I have conveyed to you one message. And inshallah, all of us will stick together. If from today onwards, in South Hall, anywhere else you go, anyone is following one way in prayer or outside prayer, he has an evidence, say Alhamdulillah, let me go and find a brother who does not even pray. Okay, inshallah, you will do that. جزاكم الله خير وعفوكم الله من هذا العالم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمن منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا صدق الله العظيم This talk has been titled the, Methodo the Methodology of the Salaf in Jurisprudence. Uh, juris by Jurisprudence we mean the, the science of Fiqh as we know it today. <coughs>